other young adults, Robbie and Jen, were at a punk rock concert with friends enjoying the effects of herbs. However, Jen wasn't impressed with the band and found their music unbearable. She decided to leave, much to Robbie's displeasure, who was having a great time. Jen wanted to go home, but Robbie insisted they go to Lee's house to get more herbs. Jen was surprised, knowing Robbie was already high as a kite and she had reservation about Lee. Despite agreeing with Jen's assessment of Lee, Robbie insisted they go because Lee had the best and the most potent herbs. On their way to Lee's apartment, it started raining and Jen was upset with Robbie for getting them stuck in the rain just because he wanted to go to High Cloud 7. Seeking shelter, they hid under a bridge. Suddenly, Robbie saw a colorful electric spark approaching him. He tried to warn Jen but she saw nothing. Before he could avoid the spark, it hit him and he was electrocuted. At that moment, his memory flashed back to encounters with powerful beings, conflicts and superpowers he had never seen before. Everything around him was happening in a flash. When he became conscious, he found himself at his house, puking and feeling sick and didn't know how he had gotten home. With Jen caring for him, he was surprised to find three super-powered beings in his house. One of them informed him that a super-villain named the Plague was coming after him. Not just to capture him but to end him and put him to a final sleep. Robbie checked with Jen to ensure he wasn't still experiencing the effects of the herbs he had taken earlier. Jen assured him that what he was seeing wasn't a dream or hallucination. Despite feeling a bit dizzy, Robbie decided to argue with the three super individuals who were in a hurry. They quickly explained that the mantle had chosen Robbie to protect humanity, granting him extra ordinary powers. He was the last in a long line of individuals selected for this task. With little time to spare and claiming Robbie's life was in danger, the strongest of the individuals, Cabra, picked him up put him on her shoulder and rushed to his bedroom as they go straight for the closet, leaving Jen confused as Robbie demanded to be put down. The sudden move occurred because one of the super individuals, Shadow, had the power of teleportation. His ability required a very dark environment to manifest, allowing him to open doors in the shadow realm and move from one place to another in seconds. Before Jen and Robbie could comprehend what was happening, Happening, they found themselves in a different apartment like something out of a dream. The place resembled a lab which was owned by Cabral the strongest and the most innovative in the group. Shadow could travel through doors, instantly reaching different areas and places, while Necra, a super medium, has the ability to travel to the spiritual realm and purgatory, serving as more than just a medium. The location they brought Robbie and Gen 2 was far from the population, ensuring their safety. This precaution was taken because the plague could become highly destructive when he appears, endangering human lives. So Cabral asked Robbie to manifest and activate the powers given to him by the mantle and he did so without any difficulties. Robbie was excited and joyous as having superhuman powers was a dream come true. But just in a short while, it might be his nightmare. Robbie wasn't deluded. He knew he needed plenty of training to understand the powers bestowed upon him. Cabral explained that Robbie's powers were limited only by his imagination, enabling him to manipulate an energy shield at will and possess super speed. They also informed Robbie that he was the 38th host selected by the mantle in the past decade and the 150th in half a century. Every time a host body was eliminated, the mantle chose another. Learning this, Robbie wanted them to take the powers away from him. They clarified that it was impossible as there was no turning back once choosing. Out of nowhere, the villain called the plague appeared, striking them with a blast for he could sense the powers of the mantle. Necra asked Shadow to teleport them out of 
the lab but shadow couldn't as the environment wasn't dark enough for him to open doors to the shadow realm this posed a problem because robbie wasn't prepared to face the plague in battle the plague clarified that his issue was with the mantle and no one else he challenged robbie stating that if he fought against him he would spare the lives of his friends not holding back robbie kissed jen and accepted the plague's challenge instructing cabral necra and shadow to take jen to safety out of nowhere robbie bravely attacked the plague who initially fell backwards but stopped one of robbie's strikes surprising him the plague knocked him out before robbie could regain his composure him to fall to the ground as the plague attempted to use his entire body to crush Robbie Cabral intervened by striking him from behind this proved to be a mistake as the plague retaliated by slapping her away by infecting her and warning her not to interfere using the distraction Robbie punched the plague who wasn't looking in his direction it seemed Robbie had the upper hand momentarily however overconfidence Robbie rushed towards the plague only to have his head swiftly smashed off his body in an instant robbie met his demise much to everyone's surprise and disappointment as the essence of the mantle faded away the plague issued a warning to necra cabral and shadow cautioning them not to hide the mantle from him again or there would be dire consequences he asserted that their efforts to stop him were futile with that the plague flew away cabral realized that the plague had infected her during their confrontation but she assured shadow that she would find a cure in her lab meanwhile jen sobbed beside robbie's lifeless body which was now missing its head a miraculous event unfolded as the three contemplated their next steps with jen the same electrical spark that had transformed robbie into the mantle struck jen and suddenly to everyone's surprise she became the new mantle overwhelmed and emotionally distraught jen pleaded for the mantle's power to be taken away but the reality was that once the mantle chooses its host it was an irreversible bond despite cabral's attempts to console her jen blamed the tree for robbie's demise and angrily warned them to stay away before flying off with robbie's headless body with her new superpowers she flew away fast and further away from the three super individuals in a confused state jen took robbie's body to the hospital desperately seeking help however the nursing charge upon discovering the headless body called for hospital staff to remove it the nurse recognized jen's emotional turmoil gave her some sedatives and led her to a room to rest as the hospital staff began to respond the nurse promptly alerted the police and requested security sensing trouble unbeknown to them the villain the plague arrived drawn by the presence of the mantle which he could feel when the host activated its powers enraged the plague stormed into the hospital causing chaos and demanding information about the mantle he showed no mercy resorting to violence and even putting to sleep those who couldn't provide the answers he seeks his impatience only intensified the brutality of his actions within the hospital walls Necra and Shadow located the hospital room where Jen was recovering. However, an induced Jen, still distraught and blaming them for Robbie's demise, refuses to go with them. Necra explained that her presence was endangering lives, emphasizing that the plague wouldn't cease his pursuits until he found and confronted her. As the plague continued its ruthless rampage, leaving chaos and death in its wake, Necra and Shadow faced the added challenge of dealing with an unconscious Jen who fell to the floor due to the sedatives she had taken. The burden of carrying her made their situation more precarious, especially as the plague's relentless pursuit drew nearer. The urgency to find a haven grew as they navigated the hospital's chaos, keeping Jen safe from the approaching threat. Having located a dark closet suitable for teleportation, Necra and Shadow swiftly transported themselves out of the hospital. The plague, sensing the absence of the mantle's presence, departed from the hospital, leaving chaos in his wake. The sudden disappearance of the mantle's energy diverts 
the plague's attention, granting Necra and Shadow a reprieve from his relentless pursuit. In the Shadow Realm, guided by Shadow, they traveled through doorways, descending deep beneath the ground to a concealed location where the plague's malevolent presence couldn't reach Jen, who now possessed the power of the mantle. As Jen regained consciousness, she found herself face to face with a cyborg paraplegic named CCTV, also known as Walter. Walter served as the group's eyes, providing guidance to Shadow and helping them navigate potential dangers, particularly threats like the plague. As Jen woke up and saw Cabral, she vehemently expressed her refusal to be with them, still blaming them for Robbie's demise. However, she soon noticed a saline drip connected to her arm. Cabral clarified that it was saline, not a sedative, explaining that her use of super speed to travel 2,000 kilometers had severely dehydrated her and the saline was to replenish her body. Jen expressed her desire to return home, but Cabral cautioned her, emphasizing the danger it posed to her and those close to her. The plague, relentless in its pursuit, would continue to pose a threat until her demise. Cabral assured Jen that their current location was a safe haven. Jen expressed doubt about the hideout's safety, questioning why they didn't bring Robbie here. Cabral explained that the mistake resulted from timing. Historically, the plague never appeared to confront the mantle more quickly. However, recent events indicated a change, with the plague seemingly always around the corner whenever the mantle chose a new host. Jen accused them of being passive and doing nothing while the mantle faced the plague alone, which she deemed cowardly. However, the reality was that the mantle had previously defeated the plague single-handedly. For them, getting involved in the fight was of no use. At worst, it was a distraction for the mantle. CCTV assured Jen he could monitor everything. Even though they hid kilometers below the Earth's surface, Jen was cautioned not to use or activate her powers at the moment to prevent the plague from sensing her. Jen observed Cabral's almost decaying arm and she began healing it. However, the process would take days, just as it did after the last battle with Robbie. Now, Necra and Shadow brought some food, urging Jen to eat and replenish her energy. They explained that she would need it for her upcoming spiritual journey, assisted by the medium Necra. At Cabral's request, Necra was to take Jen on a spiritual journey to purgatory. At first, Jen questioned the purpose of going to purgatory. The explanation was that she needed to see her predecessors, those who were once chosen by the mantle, hoping to find answers and strategies to defeat the plague in battle. Upon arriving in purgatory, Jen was surprised to find that the view was similar to Earth. The only distinction was that she struggled to walk and control her movements, a challenge that Necra assisted her in overcoming by guiding her to stabilize herself in this realm. Necra also mentioned that she would meet the first chosen mantle, whom she considered an idiot. As they reached the bar where all the chosen mantles were gathered, Jen was shocked to see Robbie, her late boyfriend. Seeing Robbie, she couldn't hold back her tears. It was a union she needed, possibly closure, but Necra was in no mood for a romantic gesture. She told Jen the primary purpose was to talk to the first chosen mantle who once defeated the plague, who wanted to be left alone when they met him. But Necra had no time for his drunken nonsense. She told him she wasn't here for him, but for Jen, as she needed to know everything about the plague before confronting him in battle. Before being chosen as the mantle, he was a drunk, a high school janitor, alone, bitter and divorced. He had nothing to show for it except for paying alimony which he couldn't afford. He got chosen by the mantle and his life changed. For 8 years, he had no problems with his powers. Criminals feared him and he was the world's defender. He remarried and had a son. Suddenly, the villain plague appeared. The plague was brutal, causing even more chaos than other villains. Stopping him was challenging. Their conflict was tense and honestly, the plague had the upper hand. It was the first time the 
Mantle felt pain from an adversary and he was losing the fight. Determined not to lose his lifestyle to the villain, he fought harder. By chance, he defeated the plague. In defeat, the plague begged for his demise. But the Mantle had a code against taking lives. He followed his ethics but it would be to his detriment. The plague warned him that he had signed his own end of life warrant by not putting him away when he had the chance. The plague, after escaping his prison cell, seek revenge. He targeted all those the mantle loved, going after his family and everyone close to him to break his spirit. Eventually, he came for the mantle and sent him to the beyond. Since then, anyone chosen by the mantle has met their demise at the hands of the plague. The only advice he has for Jen is to say goodbye to her loved ones and be prepared to meet her own demise. In anger, Jen slapped the drink off his hand, grabbed him and demanded that he tell her how he defeated the plague the first time. However, he informed her that he couldn't remember how as he was drunk when he beat the plague and he couldn't recall what he did to defeat him the first time. Time. Jen was furious and frustrated because coming to purgatory didn't provide the answers she needed to defeat the plague. Robbie chased after her, urging her to do whatever it took to stay safe and avoid the plague as much as possible and they said their last goodbye for now. Following a fruitless journey to the spirit world without any answers on defeating the plague, they acknowledged that stopping him seemed nearly impossible. How could anyone conquer the undefeatable? Those who intervened in the battle between the mantle and the plague were crushed and smashed to their final demise. The plague was deadly serious in his warning that no one should get involved or there would be severe consequences. Many before Jen, chosen by the mantle, had tried to stop the plague only to fall in battle, their fate sealed by his hands. The plague will inevitably come for her whether Jen activates her powers or not. The plague loses it only if she doesn't accept his challenge and hides. He will start eliminating anything and anyone in his path until the chosen one by the mantle accept his challenge. The cycle has persisted for more than 50 years and everyone hoped that each chosen mantle would discover a way to defeat the villainous plague. Having had no solution to defeating the plague, Jen decided to leave. What's the point of staying with people who have yet to find a solution in 50 years? Cabral warned against her departure, fearing she might endanger her loved ones. But Jen was past caring, tired of hiding from the inevitable. She would take the first chosen Mantle's advice and bid farewell to friends and family. She then asked Shadow to return her home. CCTV assured Cabral not to worry too much about Jen. He would watch her every move even though she had warned them not to follow her. When they arrived at her house through Shadow's teleportation, Shadow pleaded with her not to lose hope in them. He acknowledged that they often get things wrong at the most critical times. The best they could hope for was that the next mantle would be able to conquer and stop the plague. Shadow asked her not to be too hard on Cabral as the plague had wiped out all her family and everyone in her village. She had been seeking the demise of the plague. They needed her in these perilous times because her powers were the only thing that had come close to conquering the super villain called the plague. However, Jen was not interested as she had long lost hope and was not in the mood to bear the cross of hope. She apologized to Shadow stating that she was not the one to stop an entity like the plague. When she reached in side of her house, her mother, who was frantic and thought something terrible had happened to her due to Robbie's demise at the hospital, made sure to let her mother know she was okay. There seems to be no love lost between mother and daughter as Jen's mother disapproves of her relationship with Robbie, considering him a pothead when he was alive. Jen was surprised at how hysterical her mom was over his death as she never liked him. While her mother was sincerely sorry Robbie had passed on to her, she was just a delinquent pothead. So Jen went to her bedroom, ignoring her mother to play with her cat one last time, confessing that she wasn't ready to pass on. Shadow ensures that Jen is safe at home before returning to their hideout. As he passes through doors in the shadow realm, as soon as he gets to the underground where they were hiding, he is met with a surprise. Right before him is the supervillain 
the plague a chain bound cabral a dismantled cctv and a bruised and battered necra the plague demanded to know where jen was for he had warned them not to hide the mantle from him and there would be consequences if they did giving an excuse for her disappearance due to the death of robbie was the best jen could do at the moment who would believe her story that sounds more like something you read from a graphic novel or a comic book she never deserved to be eliminated nor did she ask to be chosen by some entity called the mantle which never gives any information on what her power was all about just down to instinct based on what she's been told which was practically nothing at the end of the day she was seeing her friends for the last time having her last drink her last party her last music and possibly her last herbs bravely she walked up to the creepy lee who was unaware that his debtor robbie had passed away much to his surprise jen asked him if he had any herbs meanwhile the plague was busy manhandling shadow to give the location of jen the plague was most disappointed in him for he had warned him several times to stay clear of the fight between him and the mantle he wondered why shadow put himself in danger when he knew his quarrel was not with him and his friends but with the mantle since shadow couldn't help himself by minding his own business it was time to be eliminated as he had become an annoying pest to the plague not seeing it coming a dismantled disabled cctv also known as walter blasted the plague from behind with a proton gun the blast sent him flying across the room unfortunately for cctv the proton gun only recharges for about an hour before he knew what was happening the unforgiving plague grabbed him by the head and squashed it with his bare hands that was the end of cctv also known as walter the plague in a fit of rage warned the others that they had one final opportunity to provide the information he seeks any incorrect answer or refusal to answer would result in severe consequences he emphasized that although it might seem like a relished causing them pain he actually did not then he forcibly grabbed the shadow for further interrogation as jen left her friends behind and walked home alone the effects of the consumed herbs began to take hold leading her to see hallucinations of her cat casper casper a manifestation of herself in feline form conveyed a sense of guidance initially resigned to her fate jen realized that avoiding the challenges ahead won't be a long-term solution she acknowledged the need to confront and overcome the challenges that lay ahead purposefully jen ignited and activated her powers taunting and summoning the plague at that moment the plague who was fiercely manhandling shadow sensed the aura of the mantle within jen surprisingly he spared the lives of shadow and his friends cautioning them not to obstruct his path again emphasizing the severe consequences that will follow if they did as the plague prepared to depart the shadow pleaded with him to spare jen the shadow argued that the plague had already taken the lives of numerous choosing mantles and harming jen wouldn't make any difference the plague in an unexpected twist asserted that his conflict with the mantle was not driven by vengeance but by mercy this statement perplexed everyone questioning how such brutal actions could be deemed merciful with the plague gun shadow released cabral from the chain that bound her they were determined to pursue him but necra after witnessing the demise of cctv also known as walter expressed her weariness in the relentless pursuit of the plague's demise she felt disheartened and conveyed to cabral and shadow that chasing after the plague seemed futile and yielded no positive outcomes necra saw no point in risking her life for what seemed like a futile cause she advised cabral and shadow to continue their pursuit but she decided to withdraw from the chase necra was swayed by plague's claim that his mission was one of mercy rather than vengeance she emphasized the importance of understanding the super villain's true motives and expressed her belief that engaging the plague without knowledge of his weaknesses was a perilous and ultimately fruitless endeavor despite cabral and shadow's attempt to persuade her to stay and continue the mission necra remained resolute in her decision to step away the toll of losing people close to her had taken its toll and tearfully she parted ways with cabral and shadow choosing to distance herself from the pursuit of the plague jen embracing her role as a chosen mantle activated and manifested her powers sending a signal to the plague that she was ready to confront him although she wasn't fully prepared the unavoidable truth compelled her to face the imminent challenge 
head on. Cabral and Shadow, lacking the support of the late CCTV, also known as Walter, had to improvise in their search for Jen. Fortunately, she wasn't challenging to find, as they observed the manifestation and activation of her powers in the nearby forest. Jen continued to showcase her powers in the forest, anticipating the arrival of the plague. When he finally appeared, he was taken aback by her bravery. However, he quickly undermined her, believing she was the weakest of the mantle he had ever faced. Unfaced by his poetic compliments, Jen boldly urged him to bring it on. And the plague did bring it on as he struck Jen, who flew to the other side of the forest and crashed into the snow. She was as high as a kite, for she was on herbs. Cabral and Shadow rushed to her aid, helping her to her feet. Shadow suggested they leave, emphasizing that she wasn't prepared to face the plague, especially in her current state of intoxication. Cabral concurred, offering to train and prepare her for the imminent confrontation. However, Jen was persistent, refusing to back down and insisting she wouldn't run away. Jen grabbed Shadow, fly into the sky despite his protests and headed straight for the plague, who eagerly anticipated their demise. Upon approaching the plague and grabbing him as she flew higher, she told Shadow to teleport her and the plague into the Shadow Realm. In this mysterious realm, the plague became disorientated and struggled to comprehend the unfamiliar surroundings. Jen then urges Shadow to leave her in the Shadow Realm with the plague and find Necra, emphasizing its crucial importance. Even though Shadow was unaware of Necra's whereabouts after she had abandoned the mission, then Jen faces the plague in combat in the Shadow Realm. As Jen confronted the plague in battle, Shadow teleported out of the Shadow Realm. Meeting Cabral, he explained Jen's bold move of trapping the plague in the Shadow Realm. Cabral acknowledged it as a clever move but questioned why he needed to bring Necra to face the plague and asked Shadow to send her to the Shadow Realm for they had no idea what Jen was doing but they went along with it. Then Shadow sent Cabral to the Shadow Realm to support Jen against the plague. Shadow was shocked to find Necra in the secret high out below the ground. She admitted that she only stuck around because she couldn't leave due to Shadow's teleportation. Shadow then shared Jen's request, but Necra refused. She was wary of the pointless mission and doubted her ability to help against a formidable foe like the plague. Due to Shadow's persistent persuasion, Necra eventually agrees to join him. However, she made it clear that this would be the final time. She was tired of losing loved ones to this super villain. In the dark realm, Jen and Cabral fought fiercely against the plague. They clashed blow for blow, with Jen showing no mercy. Cabral was not holding back on the plague. In fact, she was too enthusiastic and a bit carried away, for it seemed she had the upper hand. The intense battle continued until Necra arrived. Shadow and Necra arrived just in time. Jen urged Necra to trust her, revealing an elaborate plan to defeat the plague. Suddenly, plague charged at them for a final strike. However, Cabral intervened with a swift kick to his face, angering him. Plague retaliated by grabbing Cabral, who struggled to break free. With his powers, Plague dissolved her, shocking the group as Cabral fell to her demise as she filtered away like dust. Jen told Shadow to teleport them out of the Shadow Realm. Initially, Shadow hesitated, unsure if trapping the plague in the shadow realm was the right move. Jen agreed with him but asked him to make haste for them to get out before the plague caught up with them. As they left the shadow realm, the plague dived and pursued them, managing to escape with them. Before plague could regain composure, Jen immediately approached Necra. She seized control of her spiritual plane by linking to purgatory, where the past chosen mantles emerged and attacked plague relentlessly. They surrounded him from all sides, delivering a severe beating that weakened him. On the brink of his demise, the plague, as usual, begged for mercy, pleading to be put out of his mystery. But if she doesn't, she knows there would be consequences, for she would meet the same fate as her predecessors. Jen became curious about why the plague had so much hatred for the mantle. She wanted to know if it was more than just seeking revenge and why he was determined to kill any chosen mantle. Initially, plague was defeated and unwilling to discover his reasons. However, when Jen refused to fulfill his request, he eventually confessed to her, revealing why he did what he did. The truth is, the plague is a living 
human suffering. His body is plagued with various diseases and the catch is he is immortal. The only way he can die is through execution. For years he searched for someone who could defeat him in battle and end his existence. No one came close until he encountered the first mantle who defeated him. However, out of moral conviction, the first mantle chose not to end him even though plague begged to be eliminated. Without a second thought or hesitation, Jen swiftly ended the existence of the plague. The first chosen mantle felt a bit offended that Jen decided without consulting the earlier mantles. Jen rebuffed him, pointing out that his past moral convictions caused much harm with his indecisive choices. She bid farewell to Robbie as all the earlier mantles returned to purgatory through Necra. Later in the day, alongside Necra and Shadow, Jen decided to join them on their superhero adventures. And so, they lived happily ever after.